Hi, this is Annie Grace with This Naked Mind, and I'm answering readers' questions. And today I have a great question from David. He says, hi, Annie. I remember when I used to drink. It seems like if I did something fun or exciting or good for myself, a non-drinking activity, I'd look forward to having a drink afterward. For example, if I went on a long run or had a great workout and I was feeling energized, I'd look forward to going home and drinking. It's funny to think about that now, but I notice it all the time with other people. There's always beer after runs, even after yoga. When they're relaxed and content and happy, why would people want to drink? What could this be? Is it that they're rewarding themselves? Or is there a biological connection, like to keep the endorphins running? I'm curious to your thoughts. Anyway, thanks again for all your work. You've helped countless people in their desire to live a happier, healthier, fuller life. All my best, David. So that is a great, great question. I think there's a lot of reasons. First of all, um, artificial stimulation is what happens to your brain when you drink something. So any addictive substance does this. It artificially stimulates the pleasure circuit of your brain. And you might think, okay, that's that's a great thing. But what you don't understand about that artificial stimulation is that it, it ends with alcohol very, very quickly. You have about a 30 minutes of what they call like a, an upper, and then you have two to three hours of a downer, and that's just for a single drink based on how your blood alcohol content goes up and goes back down. But when you have just taxed your body, um, so when you've just been on a run, when you have a completely empty stomach, when you've just been working out, doing yoga, sweating a lot, guess what happens is you have that stimulation that normally would hit you is going to hit you harder. So that artificial stimulation that would happen, you know, if, if you drank a drink on a full stomach, that half an hour of upper might be 20 minutes. If you drink a drink after a run or after something really taxing, that time of an upper is going to hit you faster, hit you harder, and it might be for a bit longer. And that's just because your body has been really, um, you know, taxed in some way and your stomach is empty. The glucose has really been processed from your muscles. And so when you influx a lot of sugar and carbs, which is what alcohol is, it's going to hit you faster and quicker. So people notice this subconsciously. And I used to do this too after I completed a really long run or a marathon or something. It was like, okay, take me to the beer tent because there's a huge part of it's very cultural to do these days to have even wine and yoga, wine and workouts, beer and exercise, very counterintuitive, but very cultural. And so we think, okay, everybody's doing it. There's no big deal. There's no problem. And then we go to these things. And what happens is it hits us faster. It hits us harder. It teaches our brain to want it. And we establish a habit. And the interesting thing about habits and about dopamine when in, in regards to habits is habit is just something you, you do pretty unconsciously without thinking about it. And so it can just be really ritual and routine. Driving to work, same route every day, you do it as a habit. When you enter dopamine into the mix, you actually have cues, dopamine imprints, not only the cues right around your specific habit, but everything that's happening before. So if you started that every time you go for a long run, you come home and the first thing you do is go to the refrigerator and pop a beer, then you are getting a dopamine rush as soon as you see your front door because the dopamine saying, okay, that beer is coming. And that dopamine rush, again, is what happens with addictive substances that are artificially stimulating parts of your, your brain. The bummer is that as fast as it hits you, it goes away. So you're going to pay for that beer by taking away the massive amount of endorphins and energy and well-being that you had. You're going to have a little uptick, and it's going to feel, you know, a, a huge like artificial stimulation for a little while, but then for that half an hour or maybe 40 minutes, if you're on a completely empty stomach, you're going to have two to three hours of your body having to metabolize that alcohol, flush out the toxins through your liver. And alcohol is interesting because it's both a stimulant and a depressant. So you have that, you know, 30 to 40 minutes of stimulation on an empty stomach, 20 minutes without, and then you have two to three hours, sometimes longer of that depressant. And that's when alcohol actually triggers the release of adrenaline and cortisol in your body. So it stresses your body out even more. So there's another reason is just that out, your body is quite frankly taxed after a workout. So again, the glucose has left your system and alcohol fills psychologically that need because it's completely high in sugars, hugely high in sugars and carbohydrates. I mean, it, per you know calorie of alcohol, it's basically pure sugar and carbs. And so when you have depleted sugar and carbs in your body, your body will crave something high in sugar and carbs. And it does this anyway, but if you make it alcohol, it will very quickly learn, okay, that's what I want after a workout. And then the other factor in here is just simple dehydration. It's a drink, 
it happens to be the drink that looks good at that time or that you've habitually conditioned yourself to drink. And then so you reach for it and it tricks your brain into thinking, okay, you feel like you're being hydrated, but the crazy thing about alcohol, and I think we all know this at some level, is that even a beer, which is gonna be the most water in, in something, the least amount of alcohol, is gonna have maybe four to 6% alcohol and 90, the rest of it's gonna be basically water. So it could be up to 96% water, but that four to 6% alcohol is such a heavy diuretic, meaning it sucks the water out of your body and expels it as waste, that it's going to take that 90% of water, expel it and actually take more water out of your cells. Alcohol hydrates you on a cellular level. So it's probably the worst thing you can do after a workout when your body is crying out for hydration. But it is again, so cultural that we do it all the time and very mixed up when you look at it. I think you're right, David, you're sitting there thinking like, I just can't believe people do this. Like what, what is happening? And when you think of it objectively and you think of what it's doing in your body, it's like, what is happening? This is so bizarre. I can't believe that people do this. I can't believe I did it. I can't believe I would run half marathon, 13.1 or yeah, 13.1 miles and then go and, you know, drink beers. And it, it's just crazy to think about. But anyway, so it, alcohol dehydrates you on a cellular level. So instead of hydrating you, that beer is going to leave you more thirsty and more dehydrated because that diuretic piece of the four to six percent of that content is more powerful than the 96% of water because it sucks body out, uh, water out of your very cells at your cellular level. So I think, again, there's a lot of re reasons. It's the artificial stimulation that it gives your pleasure center is much higher um, when you have an empty stomach and when the glucose has been depleted from your muscles. Uh, habit, so dopamine involved in that habit means that you have cues from before. If you've been doing this all the time, you're actually going to get that dopamine rush when you see the finish line. You're going to start that craving because that's how dopamine works in the craving cycle. And then if your body is stressed, it's going to want to be replenished with something high in carbs, high in calories. And if you've been giving it alcohol, it will learn very quickly, okay, that's what I want, even though the back end of that is really depleting to your body as it processes and metabolizes the toxins. And then, of course, the dehydration aspect. So thank you, David. That was a great question. And it is such a bizarre, bizarre thing. Um, and I'm seeing some of the comments, that's great. So yeah, hike, drinking whiskey, absolutely. Stuff like that, it's absolutely crazy. So we're feeling so good, we think we deserve it, we think it's a reward, and really it's probably exactly the opposite of what our body needs. But great question and have a wonderful day. Let me ask you a question. What is better than change? <laughs> Lasting change, of course. And if you've had trouble making change stick, either with alcohol or in any other area of your life, you are in for a treat. I created the 100 Days of Lasting Change to ensure that we don't just change for a moment, but we truly transform for a lifetime. And this program is so close to my heart. Thousands of people have been through it and their results are incredible. But don't take my word for it. Check it out at thisnakedmind.com forward slash 100 days. And as always, rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast as it truly helps the message reach somebody who might need to hear it today.